Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the special session on this Sunday. Uh, sorry, Saturday, <laughs> uh, close to afternoon. And I am Samir today, welcoming you all to this uh, particular program, which is called Make Your Scope. And we are bringing this to you from the Inter University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, which is a research institute in Pune, India. And uh, a very uh, well-known uh, institute in the country and across the world. We also have a very uh, fledging and uh, very fruitful kind of a public outreach program. And I am, uh, and my team will be here soon and you'll be able to meet with them. So we represent this public outreach team and we do a lot of uh, outreach events for science education and astronomy popularization. So uh, in this uh, kind of endeavor, we thought that uh, since we are all lovers of astronomy, okay, and uh, all of us uh, are so interested and excited by the sky that we actually you know, take out time from our busy lives and uh, look up at the sky uh, regularly also. So that's a very important thing that's, that connects us together. And today we thought that we'll start a series which will collect, collect, connect, and collect people who have similar interests uh, to join hands, to join brains, to join instruments, and maybe in the long run, uh, you know, have a have a very uh, active group who observe the sky, but not with uh, just anything, but with their own telescopes. So today is uh, uh, the start of a let's say a long series of interactions, I think, and I hope which will uh, bring us together and uh, allow us, enable us to get our own scopes. Okay, so in this, of course, uh, there's a pun on the <laughs> word scope. It all is short for telescopes, but of course it also grows our scope of looking at the sky and doing various activities involving all these things in the sky that we love. Okay, so uh, of course <clears throat> uh, we would be going through today's session in which we'll have a lot of uh, motivation uh, shared with you about making your own telescope. But during the whole series and uh, of uh, recorded or live interactions that we will have, we will also help you get expert tips in case you want to buy your own telescope or in case you're trying to choose whether you want to buy, whether you want to make it, and uh, also give you some guidance on either buying or making of the telescope. Okay, then uh, we will also focus about uh, focus on things that you can do with your telescope. So of course, we when, when you have a new telescope, you look at the sky, you admire the moon, uh, you see some of the regular suspects in the sky, like the planets, etc., Andromeda galaxy, and then you wonder what do I do with my telescope? What can I do more? So that is uh, an, an aspect we will cover during this series, which we wish to cover during this series, and of course. Uh, one of the favorite times of, uh, of an astronomer's uh, year is winter. So, uh, and uh, whichever hemisphere you are in, <laughs> winter is winter and it gives you some of the clearest skies. Uh, we ha also have very less atmospheric turbulence and many other uh, lovely you know, conditions coming together to give you a really uh, nice look at the night sky. Okay, so we should be prepared for our winter observing season, and that is the aim. That in the let let let's see, uh, let's say in the next two months or so, we should uh, kind of get our scopes ready and begin with our preparations to observe and um, get amazed by the winter sky that we will have. So, I'll stop sharing here now. So again, welcome, and uh, uh, we realize that we have a lot of viewers here and various kinds of viewers also. So I welcome everyone, including let's say people who are who love astronomy, who love to look at the sky, who want to know more about the sky, but now they are willing to get their own scopes. Okay, So uh, you, you might want to buy something, you might, might want to choose what, what should I buy? Okay, so we welcome you and keep uh, tuned for uh, hearing more about such choices. Uh, you might also be considering making your telescope. 
you might want to choose whether I should buy or make, right? So what are the advantages and disadvantages? What are the experiences of people who have made their own telescopes? We will share them with you very soon. And then there are these people who might have their own telescopes, okay? You're also welcome. And we will, uh, we promise that we will also help you with, uh, uh, you know, finding out more tasks that you can do with your telescope. Or if suppose your telescope is kind of uh, either out of date or some of the things are, uh, some of the components are not working properly. Uh, so you want some kind of a troubleshooting advice, we are ready to do that as well, okay? We also welcome a lot of astronomy communicators who might be joining us. So you are our, um, uh, you know, you are one of the best resources of um, astronomy, of the astronomy world, where you actually carry the scientific research or the excitement of astronomy to the people, okay? So you communicate about astronomy to the people. You are this bridge between the professional world and the people who want to know about astronomy, get excited by it, you know, and share all the amazement and the joy of this particular science. So for you also, we have uh, some special sessions. And uh, as the program goes forward, you know, stay tuned and we'll reveal more of our plans in this continuing series. And as I said, we continue, uh, we love to continue through many months and keep connecting back and forth with all of you. So, uh, <laughs> so please, uh, you know, stay in touch with us and uh, keep following this series so that we can have a lot of fruitful and uh, useful interactions. And of course, finally, the aim is to get your own scope or make your own scope. All right, so uh, with that <laughs> slightly long introduction, I would uh, you know, uh, now uh, welcome uh, to our studio here, uh, uh, Mr. Arvind Paranspe, who uh, has been a big uh, you know, supporter and actually a, a, a big initiator of this uh, program of telescope making. Uh, he was the officer in charge of public outreach at Ayuka for many decades. And then now he is uh, the director at the Nehru Planetarium in Mumbai. So welcome, Arvind. Uh, if you could turn on your camera. So Arvind Paranspain is joining us and he actually <laughs> was very instrumental in starting this uh, telescope making programs, uh, large scale telescope making programs uh, in which many, many people joined and actually made telescopes uh, wherever he went. So uh, lovely to have you here on this good morning, uh, Arvind. And um, we invite you to share your experiences and you know what, what you suggest to the people joining us here, all these different types of people. What do you suggest uh, about telescope, uh, getting telescopes and making telescopes? Please. Uh, thank you so much, Samir. And I appreciate the initiative taken by all of you to and two people to make the telescope, start doing observations and so on. I started telescope making, I just realized that it was approximately, not approximately, nearly 20, 40 years ago, yeah, soon after the total solar eclipse of 1980. I think in 81, I started grinding my first mirror. Now, those were the days where uh, things were not easily available. And we even worked on various things like using sand to grind telescopes and so on. But coming to the point that we are now discussing is that why would one like to make a telescope? And how are you going to make use of it? Or what is the interest? So I assume, or rather we can all assume that everyone who is gathered here has some interest in astronomy. Uh, and mostly the observational astronomy. People do have theoretical interest. People like to read about it and talk about it, theoretical part. But I, I presume that uh, uh, people gathered here in this meeting, everyone is probably interested in looking through the telescope, observing the sky. And as it happened to me, uh, telescope was difficult to come by. So my first telescope was actually made out of a binocular lens. Okay, there was a broken binocular at our place. So I made use of that binocular and it lens and put it in a shuttlecock box. And in those days, I could actually observe few things. I mean, it was a simple stand which is made at home. 
Uh, later on, I had this opportunity of uh, visiting the uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics. And one uh, Mr. Jairajan, uh, who used to teach us how to make a telescope. I was the, pro I was the only student at that point in time. So we learned how to make a six inch mirror. Mirror means uh, it's just for the reflecting Newtonian type of telescope. Now, see, uh, my love for making telescope or my love for astronomy is there. Okay, it started that I, I really enjoy doing that. And I'm also a hands-on person. That is, I would like to work with my own hands. So it was a thoroughly enjoyable experience of making a telescope. So uh, to people, uh, I would also like to say that, you know, optics, as we say, that optics is a light work. Okay, it takes a lot of uh, elbow oil, no doubt, but it's a beautiful work where you learn a lot about optics, uh, where you learn a lot about mechanical things, how to assemble the instruments, and then you also observe the sky using your telescope made by you. So it's an it's a enormous pleasure that you make your own telescope and then you look at the sky. It has an entirely different charm than something that you pick up from the shelf. Later on, as I uh, started working at uh, IIA, conducted too many uh, telescope making workshops at Bangalore. And then as Samir has said just now that uh, then we did a uh, lot many workshops at Ayuka uh, and uh, invited people to participate. People made six inch, four inch, two inch telescopes and so on. So my take on uh, this particular uh, uh, telescope making is that if you love doing things with your hands and if you love watching the sky, then telescope making is the right thing that you have come here on this particular platform that over a period of time, about few months, you will have your own telescope. Uh, I, I don't have much to say about it at this point in time, but I would, uh, as requested, I would stay on and uh, answer the questions if people have. But beyond that, I would only again say that it's a fun. You, when you make telescope, when you make an astronomical mirror, you work at a fantastic levels of accuracy. For example, when you make a mirror for four inch telescope or six inch telescope, you are actually working at the wavelength of light. You know, surface, uh, we have not discussed that, but at some point in time, when you discuss this, you'll realize that you correct the surface of your mirror to the one tenth of lambda, one tenth of the wavelength of light, sometimes four to uh, one tenth of the wavelength of light. This is an enormous and fantastic accuracy that you work in. You will also see that how to beat atmosphere, uh, uh, what you should do to uh, make your telescope perfectly collimated and so on and so forth. So I think these are just introductory remarks and I will stop here. And whenever I'm required, I'm there to uh, put in my uh, uh, little bit. Thank you, Samir. Thanks so much, Arvind. And yeah, we'll, we'll count on you being around and giving us valuable uh, expert advice to all thank the people you. joining us. And uh, I, I was just checking the YouTube chat. So thanks for the, you know, about 100 people joining us right now. So please do announce where you're joining from in the chat. You know, type out your, if you can type out your name or place where you're joining from. Uh, we'll be, uh, you know, very happy to know. I can see that there are people from, uh, you know, right from South India, from Northeast, from Arunachal Pradesh, even from Jammu Kashmir. Uh, so many people joining us. So tell your friends and colleagues also uh, about this particular series that is starting. And our channel is, of course, here. Please subscribe and <laughs> you know, keep getting alerts. But this series will be recorded, and uh, most of the content will be on our YouTube channel. So people can always come back and watch it. So with this small uh, promotion and advertisement, <laughs> uh, I you know, have to also share with you uh, some uh, uh, you know, experiences of people who have made their own uh, telescopes here. So uh, let me uh, invite, uh, I mean, let me, let me actually start by inviting Sonal Thorve here. Uh, Sonal, could you, could you join in? So Sonal is, uh, let's say, uh, I'll, I'll call her first an amateur astronomer, uh, astronomer at heart who uh, loves, uh, you know, the sky <laughs> and then uh, you know to study it she made her own telescope so welcome sonal and 
uh, we would love to know how you felt while making the telescope. And you know, this is just the starting. So most of us do not know, uh, you know, what goes into making a telescope. So maybe if you can say something, then we'll elaborate on that later. Thank you. Uh, your sound is not coming. So please check. Uh, not really. So, okay. So what we'll do is we'll we'll come back to you, and <laughs> all right. So uh, Sonal is having some technical problems. That's uh, always fine. Uh, we also have with us uh, Purvi. Uh, so maybe Purvi can join us. Purvi is another uh, you know youngster who's made her own telescope, and uh, she is um, also eager to tell us about her experience. Purvi. Uh, Yes, sir. Thank you for joining us. And also, also let us know. I mean, Purvi, uh, where, where are you and what uh, are you uh, doing right now? So, what's your work area? So, I'm from Pune and uh, I'm in my MSc first year. I just completed the first year. We'll be starting our second year now. Okay. And um, I had come for my uh, BSc final year for uh, telescope making. I uh, wanted it to be. Uh, you know, astronomy related because that's what I was going to pursue. And uh, to begin with, I did not have any experience about workshops or any experience about telescopes. I just had the basic theory knowledge about it. So I was a bit nervous. But then um, the way the members explain it to you, all the members from uh, the workshop, they have helped me throughout. From the very start of the process to the very end of it, each and every process was explained in a very good way. So what happens was, um, it was not just a come and make your telescope. I also got to know about the basics, about the uh, workings and about the different part processes of making them. So that made it a really knowledgeable and fun experience for me. Okay, great. And uh, so what are you doing with your telescopes these days? So these days I'm not really using it as much because of the MSc first year, right. but uh, it was, I mean, when I had time, when I had my vacations, I used to take it to outstation places and all our friends, we used to just gather and, you know, stargaze all the things. Yeah, all right. And you must be the hero of the, of the situation because <laughs> it's, it's your telescope. You made it yourself. That's quite a yeah. achievement. That was, uh, you know, the way people perceive it was really good because even in my college, even today I have completed, I guess it's been a year and uh, people, they still recognize because of telescope. They're like, <laughs> yeah, it was a very big deal. Amazing, good to know that. Any special exciting observations you did with your telescope? Uh, yeah, I think I had observed uh, eclipses um yeah that's i guess one of the biggest one from them all our friends we had gathered and we had observed the lunar eclipse i don't remember the date exactly but that was a very different experience right okay yeah so i think uh, two two three years back in january we had an amazing yeah. uh, total lunar eclipse. yeah those are beautiful and, and everybody in in the world should observe the lunar eclipse and solar eclipse also uh, in person but if you if if you look at the lunar eclipse through the telescope, it might be even, you know more mind blowing. So well, wow! So you got some of the best experiences, and uh, yes. thank you for joining us and telling us uh, about your telescope making experience. Thank you, Purvi. Thank you. Uh, Sonal, can, are you are you joining us? Are you able to? Uh, yes. Can you hear yes, me perfect. now? We can hear you, but can't see you. So okay, you? just a moment. Uh... I am unable to uh, start please, the video. Please start it now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Hi. I'm sorry for the earlier thing. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, good to make your own telescope. Actually, I was very excited. I uh, ini initially I started making my own telescope when I was in college, in first year of BSc, when I used to love to go outside and observe the events. 
then uh, due to some reasons uh, i could not complete it but few years ago uh, i uh, again started making the telescope i took another glass lab so uh, you will learn about it how we make telescopes using blank glass labs and what is the process and everything during these workshops so i am not going into details but i am just going to give you a little flavor within two or three minutes that we take some blank or flat glass labs and you are the person who is making the telescope that is converting that blank glass slab in a concave mirror okay and uh, buying a telescope is another thing but making your own telescope actually in involves uh, what we can say a bit understanding about how it works how the optics works and as arvin sir also said that you have to be precise and to be precise uh, with the grinding process and polishing process you learn a lot about optics about your instrument and uh, that is what is important uh, is what i think personally and of course once you have your telescope in your hands which is ready and you have made it yourself and when you look at the first object in the sky whichever it is so moon is my favorite so i know that i have shown moon to many people through my telescope and uh, it's it's just wow <laughs> so that's uh, i i always love to make uh, i would say that uh, making your telescope is better if you are hands on person and uh, it is it gives you a lot of different experience than when you buy a telescope and observe things all right and so uh, have you also shared the telescope with your friends and public etc so Sure. How did it feel? It it's an amazing experience actually because when they first see telescope, I remember during the lockdown period. So I would like to uh, uh, share this experience during lockdown period last year. There was a conjunction of Jupiter and uh, Saturn, and that time I was just trying to uh, uh, trying to set up my telescope two days before the event. and uh, the kids who were playing in the other building in the other society they just actually they saw that something is going on on that terrace didi is uh, having some instrument a big instrument they didn't know what it is they were uh, they were of the age of 5 year 6 year and 10 year old so they just came running didi what are you doing with this what is this you are looking at something so is it uh, are you looking at stars and i said yes do you want to look at them they said yes we want to then i showed them moon and jupiter that time and these kids were so happy by looking at at the moon especially because it looks big and you can see the craters and everything through that telescope and then came their parents grandparents and they saw that uh, they also asked about what it is and how it works Uh, so sharing those uh, things with them was also fun and they uh, kids kept asking me again didi when are you going to show us moon again before going so uh, yeah that's uh, that was one of the latest experience i had during the lockdown period excellent i'm, I'm sure there's nothing better than sharing these things especially during these times when we are all you know cooked up in our houses <laughs> so if you have your own telescope you can just take it to your own window or your terrace if you have the access to one or if you if you're practicing social distancing you can even take it to a garden right uh, and or, or or somewhere outside the city if you want so i i think that's uh, one of the best things about having your own telescopes that you don't have to depend on you're always uh, the sky is always accessible to you in a much better way than what your eyes can see So that's uh, that's thanks thanks for being here, Sonal, and uh, we'll come back to you for more questions if users ask. Uh, Arvind, welcome back. Sorry. Yeah. No, uh, now now after listening to all of them, I just wanted to add a one small little thing, and that is the telescope that so far we have talked about is uh, is the observation of the night sky. But there is another thing that we have another star. 
whose surface we can see, and that's the sun. And uh, one can make even a very nice simple telescope to observe the sun, observe the sunspots, and it's a daytime activity. So I think when we uh, discuss about telescope making, I think we should keep that also in mind, that uh, making a relatively simple telescope uh, has its own advantages of observing the sun and sunspots, mainly because now the sunspot uh, minima has ended and now we are going towards the sunspot maxima. So slowly the number of sunspots would start increasing. And in this uh, case, I would also like to add and saying that there's a good lot of thing amateur astronomers can actually contribute. And that is that taking image of the sun and actually making the sunspot count number. So that's what I wanted to share after listening to uh, all of you. Thank you. Yes, of course, and uh, the, the night sky and the day sky are both uh, very exciting and we have uh, a lot of activities which we can do if you have your own telescope. So that's what the aim is. And as uh, Arunji said, that uh, even our nearest star has so much to reveal. Although we think it's always there, take it for granted, but there's so much uh, there to study in the closest star as well. And then there are these lovely companions of the night which uh, are there and waiting for all of you to see better through a telescope. So, um, Atharva, do you want to join in? Atharva, let's go into the specifics a little later uh, when we come to the activity. Oh, okay. Well, Amazing. So that's that's what uh, I mean, you was telling about that this is uh, today's sun with a sunspot. And just imagine if you had a telescope, but not the, just the raw telescope. For looking at the sun, there are several more uh, attachments that you need, uh, accessories that you need that will enable you to see the sun safely. Okay. So we always go with this big disclaimer and warning that do not look at the sun with a telescope just like that. Not, not, no telescopes, no binoculars, no optical instruments should be used to look at the sun without the solar proper solar filters. Okay, proper solar filters are extremely important. Stay safe if you want to preserve your eyes. Just, just make sure these are there. These are not part of you know superstitious harmful rays coming from the sun, etc. No, these are real rays. The sunlight that you see can. Uh, damage the, your retina or, or whatever, some parts of your eye, uh, if it gets focused on them. So do not look at the sun with just the telescope. Please uh, ensure that you know properly how to use the telescope to look at the sun. But yes, uh, there's a lot of uh, other things in the sky and all of these together, we, we can observe with the uh, telescopes if you have one. So um, let's uh, now again, I invite my team member Atharva. Here, Atharva. There is Atharva with his telescope, and uh, he's uh, going to now share with us uh, a small uh, slideshow and maybe some videos as well on, uh, you know, what is involved in telescope making or getting, and, and what are the joys that you can get from it. Please go ahead, Atharva. Take over. Shall I share it? Yeah. Let me do it then. I am ready, so I can do it immediately. So Atharva himself is, uh, you know, very <laughs> deeply uh, involved in astronomy and he's like every time uh, the day ends at his workplace, he runs to the, <laughs> to his rooftop with his telescope and starts observation till late night. So he's a very dedicated uh, observer and, and I think, uh, you know, uh, let him tell about all the joys that he has observing in the sky. Uh, I hope uh, all of you can see the slide. Can you, can you see the slide? So you have to, uh, I think the YouTube is not able to see it. Just check.
Please keep speaking, we'll check. You are audible here. Uh, at my end, you are audible. Excellent. In the studio, he is audible. Just, yeah. just quickly. Akarma, you keep saying something. Otherwise, that 20 second thing. Right. We sometimes have gaps in there. So it's, it's continuously not audible. Uh, would you like to join at my place? Yeah. So my my voice is audible, not Akarma's. Hello, am I audible now? Okay. Thanks to all the viewers who are giving comments. If you want to speak, uh, hold on, we will we'll sort out this. Let me quickly it. join from another PC. Atharva, you could you could join here in my place. Up, up, Shravya, hey. It's a comment. I so, you can talk about it. Atharva. Atharva, you can use your computer. Audible now. Atharva, you keep saying something, otherwise that 20 seconds take. I hope I will be audible now. I can hear him on YouTube now. Okay, okay, great. I can hear you on YouTube. I'll have to. Okay, so Athara, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for your patience, everyone. Yes. So I remember uh, making my telescope in Ayuka when I was in school. Uh, Arvind sir was there in the science center and he told us how we can make our own telescope. And we started grinding our four inch telescope mirror. And while that, by the time we were grinding our mirror, uh, we came to know that it is not at all a trivial task. Uh, it, it is a task of uh, immense patience. And we often had to come back to the previous carbon random grids and regrind our mirrors uh, because of all the scratches and all that. But uh, in the end, when we completed our telescope and when we, uh, it was the first object, which was Jupiter. Uh, it was very exciting. I was very, very happy to see uh, by the time we were the satellites. From the that it is not at all a trivial task. It was very exciting. Uh, right? It is a task of uh, immense patience. Is there, is there an echo? I right? often had to come back to the previous yeah. random grids and re grind our mirrors uh, because of all the scratches and all that. But uh, in the end, we completed our telescope and we used the first object. So much YouTube is on, Samir. Yes. Oh, at my place. The echo is actually YouTube reflection. Share the screen now. Yes, thank you. Right. We apologize for these technical glitches. Actually, usually it works just fine. So uh, today we will be talking about uh, telescope making, and this session is quite a primer session. We will just talk about the fundamentals, uh, what all goes on in telescope making, and how exactly can Ayuka help you in that process. And we will also like to share a couple of photos and different types of telescopes. <laughs> uh, so this is a photo from one of the telescope making sessions. You can see Tushar Dada in the center, and you can see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six telescopes that have been made by the uh, students. 
uh, right from grinding all the way up to assembly and they are all mounted on the what is known as a pyre stand so uh, this is something that you get this is the final product of the telescope making uh, and you get to uh, make and use your own telescope and that is very exciting so why to make your own telescope so a while back arvind sir already told us that uh, for people who like to do hands on uh, activities and who uh, like to work by themselves uh, can definitely enjoy this activity the most important part is uh, no matter what purpose you you are building your telescope for you can fully customize it in that way let's say if you want to use your telescope for deep sky viewing then you uh, yourself can decide the focal length of the telescope you can uh, control that focal length by grinding the telescope in such way and uh, that uh, particular uh, specification can be decided by you and you can make your own telescope mm -hmm. it also in increases your uh, and improves your understanding and you can better explain your instrument once you know your instrument uh, you can uh, understand how exactly does it work and then uh, you can also explain it to somebody else then of course it is uh, very actually uh, empowering and also very exciting to observe things coming uh, observe light which has traveled for thousands of years uh, from your own telescope and uh, another important thing is that if you uh, have to tweak your instrument in future uh, depending upon any change in uh, use then you can do that very easily because you know all the uh, tidbits and uh, tricks for modifying your instrument and the most important part for any amateur astronomer or a student is it is very cost effective so if you go and buy the similar telescope in the market it will cost maybe two three times more than whatever cost you will have to bear for making your own telescope so that is another yet important point uh, there are also some disadvantages the disadvantages are that you cannot control the uh, size of the telescope there is limitation to manually grind the mirrors because it involves a lot of uh, uh, hours of uh, work so uh, if if you can go to the next slide you can also see the list of uh, some disadvantages get stuck yeah so the most important disadvantage is that uh, there is a limitation on mirror size it is often time consuming so if you uh, complete your grinding of telescope and if you move on to the polishing and if there is some scratch on your mirror then you have to come back to grinding the mirror so it requires eternal patience it requires tremendous effort and yes there is some limitation to the mirror size that you can manually grind because uh, it does involve a lot of uh, time and energy so other than that there, i i see no drawbacks uh, and it is actually a, all in all a very fun activity and uh, i personally would 100% recommend everybody to build at least one telescope so you get a flavor of how exactly the instrument works you get a idea of how uh, easy it is to uh, make a telescope and even uh, easier then it becomes even easier to use it uh, and now after all this uh, how exactly can ayuka help you in this process so i think uh, samir dada will be able to elaborate more on that thanks atharva and thanks for all of your patience uh, with the sound problem but uh, yeah so coming to uh, why ayuka is uh, doing this you know this our the university center for astronomy and astrophysics we are a research institute so why why do we want uh, others to <laughs> make telescopes right so the main idea as per uh, you know our founder and director professor jayan narlikar is that this is a you know this is a very basic subject this is a very this is a subject that has uh, interest for everyone and if we are you know contributing to it so much from our side as as scientists as a country itself then uh, you know we need to continue that okay so we need to share that as widely as possible so that people understand this subject it's it's nothing difficult okay but if people kind of lose out on the joy of looking at the sky and you know this lovely treasure of sights and uh, discoveries which are lying right there right and these are these are all free for everyone to see so we should not you know everybody should be able to access it and with the telescope you are able to access it much better than your uh, uh, simply your eyes 
So that is uh, something we want to encourage and uh, enable people to do. So therefore, we are just basically uh, carrying on the visions of uh, great people who thought uh, like this. There's also this future generation to come uh, in which you know, uh, uh, Ayuka is kind of taking a lot of efforts to contribute to one of some of the world's largest uh, telescopes, whether it be optical telescopes, radio telescopes, X-ray telescopes, ultraviolet telescopes. Now, these are, these are going to be the future of astronomy. And uh, we are currently you know, heading towards what will be called one of the golden ages of astronomy as such. So where will the people who will contribute to this in the next generation come from? They will come from the people we excite now, today. So that is another aim of our outreach effort that we do, that uh, you know, if everybody is able to access, uh, able to understand, and is excited enough to take it up as a, as a subject of study, I think we'll go ahead a lot as uh, a collective, as a society, as a country in this particular subject. So uh, that, with that very <laughs> broad and diverse role, there's also the fact that uh, since Ayuka has, uh, has had a long uh, you know, tradition of making telescopes and we've had very, very um, you know, involved people like Professor N.C. Rana, who was um, a, a professor here. Uh, and many uh, decades ago, along with Arvind Paranspe, they went out and actually did uh, these telescope making sessions uh, and uh, workshops across the country. The tradition has continued, but today we are all you know, confined to uh, our, our places and we are not able to uh, meet with each other. We are not able to go in person and conduct telescope making workshops. So that, that's when we thought that why not use this to our advantage? And why do just one telescope making workshop in one place? Okay. So at Ayuka, we have a telescope making facility. We have a, a, a room where you can, if, if you're interested, you can visit Pune, you can come there, you can, uh, we give you this space and all the other requirements for making a telescope. So if you bring your own raw materials, uh, and you, can, you can just create it there, right there. But such facilities do not um, exist everywhere. There is no reason they cannot exist because it's, it's not a very <laughs> complex kind of a setup. And we've had uh, many people in, uh, in our uh, telescope making program, like uh, you know, we just uh, saw Purvi, and uh, we, you just saw um, Sonal, Atharva, uh, Tushar. So, so many of us have actually made their telescopes right here in Ayuka. But uh, other than that, there are many people who have made it at their home. Okay. And there are some people who are actually making telescopes even now during the lockdown in their home. So they set up a, a you know a small uh, area in the balcony or in in one corner of uh, some room, uh, and and they just go on and make their telescope because they want to have one by winter. So if if you are one such person, we want you know not to lose want you not to lose out on this process, and we want to share with you. Uh, so we although we have a telescope making facility and if you actually make the telescope with us here at Ayuka, then you'll get access to that. Uh, we also have an optical coating plant. So if you're making a reflecting telescope, you'll get to understand what this means very soon in the next few slides. So if you're making a reflecting telescope, we have a facility at our uh, large observatory at Kedavli where uh, we could get them coated for you. Okay. And of course, so if, uh, if you're doing all of this at your own place, which is possible, you don't need to have a high-tech uh, coating facility. Aluminization is possible in most big cities. Uh, if you're in a you know, small place also, you could just find out a person who would um, uh, help you out with that. So that kind of help, those kinds of contacts, that kind of uh, you know, guidance, we are ready to give. Okay. And this online session, I think, is a very good way of uh, doing that. We are able to reach many more people. And so uh, while doing this, we, we thought that all, we should also highlight that Ayuka has these uh, advantages of helping you out. So why you should trust us <laughs> in case you're uh, deciding to uh, go for telescopes. So what do we plan to do? We uh, would be uh, definitely helping you out in case you have your own telescope. We could help you kind of restore it if you um, uh, have it and if it's already working or if you restore it, we'll, we'll be able to guide you towards how to use it properly. Okay. If not, 
uh, we will be also, I think many of us are in, uh, you know, probably do not have time or right now they don't want to make a telescope. They want to, you know, try it out first and then make it. So for you, we will also have uh, some sessions on uh, how to choose your telescope. Right? What are the things you should look for when you're purchasing? So there might be, you know, websites or, you know, other uh, brochures, etc., which advertise some telescopes. Should you go for them? What is your requirement? What are you going to look for uh, with the telescope in the sky? So these are the things we can discuss during this series. Uh, that's, so that's one of the help we can uh, provide to you. And please look out for these series as they are announced. We will have different uh, titles of uh, these videos which will come out. So depending on your interest, you can join in. Uh, or you can join all of them and <laughs> get an overall picture of uh, this whole uh, particular series. So uh, this effort, as we said, is not just limited to making your telescopes, but we will also ensure that uh, those people who are astronomy communicators, let's say. So if you join with us, okay, and we'll later share some uh, links with you uh, on how to uh, join us for making telescopes better. So when you join with us, uh, later, we can also discuss on how we can use them more effectively for outreach in your own region. And I'm, I'm as I said, stoked and happy that so many people from various parts of the country are joining. Now, just, just imagine that you, have, um, you become an astronomy communicator. You are kind of always in contact with us. So you're getting the most updated news about astronomy. And uh, we are together deciding on activities that we can do with the telescope that you made, right? So just imagine how much more effect we can have across the country uh, by just this activity, okay? And just connecting through this activity. So it's, I think it's, it's very important that we keep connected. And, uh, you know, this, this is the very minor, <laughs> from our side, we feel it's a very minor uh, push or help that we can do towards uh, making and using telescopes. We are, can also, if you're, if you're an astronomy communicator, uh, or if you're one of our associates joining us. So we know your value and we would definitely like to put you in touch with each other so that uh, this uh, you know, gap sometimes exists between uh, amateur astronomers in the local area and the astronomers existing in the local universities or colleges. So maybe we could also bridge those gaps for you and you can find more collaborators, more people you can uh, tie up with in your own region, okay? So not always having to come back to Ayuka or us, you can directly create your own small uh, uh, group in your area and uh, share the sky with people or make your own telescope making workshop, why not? So that's our <laughs> goal and that's where we wish to uh, contribute a little bit of help. If uh, any of you are joining in from other countries, feel free to also uh, you know, connect with us because all this is online, so we can always help you uh, make your telescope in your place as well. Okay, so we'll give you some contact details at the fag end of this uh, program later. But let me get back to uh, Atharva, who will describe to you a uh, little bit more about telescopes. Uh, let me try the screen sharing since I'm on another machine. I hope everything is fine. Yeah, all, all right. So uh, after uh, learning about how Ayuka can help, and we, we really are looking forward uh, to talking with all of you. Uh, let's see a little bit about how you can use these telescopes when these are ready. Uh, so many a times uh, people often uh, buy a telescope and they are not aware of how to assemble it, how to uh, put it together, or what exactly to do with the telescope other than uh, looking at the moon. So uh, many a times the telescopes are often used for the first two uses, which are the fun and ob fun observations, uh, which is observing the moon, maybe observing a few planets, and <clears throat> often for um, amateur use, which is for viewing only. So there are some more uses of the telescope that you can do, which is astrophotography. You can also do some small projects. <clears throat> so nowadays, uh, with the uh, easily accessible telescopes, uh, what you can do is you can do a <clears throat> small project on lunar mapping. So if you keep on observing the surface of the moon every day, uh, it is likely that you will find new and new craters. And you will also see a lot of activity happening on the moon. There is another thing which is known as a lunar transit uh, uh, of uh, different satellites. And there is, there is also something called as lunar occultation. Uh, so an occultation is basically uh, to occult is to hide. 
so <clears throat> what happens is when you are observing the moon the moon while moving in the sky often hides a couple of stars in the background and you can see the disappearance and the reappearance of the stars as the moon uh, appears to move in the field now what happens is uh, uh, this uh, particular observation has uh, an important value and uh, you can learn about the features of the moon you can learn about the uh, uh, features like whether the periphery of the moon has a crater or it has a peak and things like these can be uh, calculated by simply looking at the moon and simply noting down the time duration of the disappearance and reappearance of the background star when you are observing the moon then there are uh, eclipses of other planets which is the eclipses of jupiter's moons and things like these that can be easily done using very small telescopes even a 4 inch telescope can be used to do all these small projects uh, so these are some of the uses that you can uh, use your telescope for uh, which we often uh, categorize into a amateur or a hobby based use uh, so uh, for professional use there is uh, there are these different activities that you can do you can do astrometry of your image which is calibrating your image to the sky coordinates and learning about the positions uh, and the coordinates of different objects inside your field of view then there is photometry so photometry is measuring the light intensity of the object uh, with the help of some additional instruments and your telescope and uh, learning more about whether the intensity coming from the object the intensity of light coming from the object is varying is it constant if it is varying how is it varying and so on then there is spectroscopy where we uh, take a spectrum of the light uh, coming from different sources and we learn more about the composition and more about the spectrum of the light then there is sky survey and mapping so this is another important activity this activity helps us discover new asteroids it helps us identify if there are any asteroids or already known asteroids or comets in the field and that is how uh, the people uh, in the earlier times would discover newer planets newer asteroids and moving objects so these are some of the professional uses which can also be done using your small telescopes so uh, with the telescopes that you make you can make uh, you can carry out these activities and these activities have a lot of good uh, scientific value as well so before we learn more about the telescope types uh, let's quickly uh, do a run through of the uh, term, terms so you will uh, read the word ota often so ota stands for optical tube assembly uh, which contains all the items listed below the optical tube assembly uh, is basically a set of all equipments which make your telescope tube uh so the first uh, equipment is the eyepiece eyepiece is responsible for magnifying the image so it is the lens that you attach and the one that you see through and this uh, small lens is responsible for magnifying your object then there are primary and secondary mirrors so this is the case when you are using a newtonian telescope which makes use of mirrors there are also refractor telescopes where it uses a convex lens by convex lens in the uh, front and then in the back there is a eyepiece which is again used to magnify the image then there is a secondary mirror which is a flat mirror so in case of a newtonian telescope there are two mirror elements and then there is additional element which is the eyepiece uh, then there is a focuser focuser is uh, the assembly where you attach the eyepiece and uh, it has a, a you know small room for movement for focusing uh, the image sharply depending upon your eye sight then there is a finder scope which is a smaller telescope with a wide field of view and often these finder scopes come with a crosshair and these crosshairs are used to align the object or quickly find the object and what we do while assembling the telescope is we make sure that the main telescope eyepiece and the crosshair of the finder scope are aligned and then there are some adjustment screws to do that alignment so it is uh, imagine that like a sniper of a rifle so how you uh, find a target in the sniper and then you fire so instead of firing we are going to observe in the eyepiece but the uh, functioning is pretty much the same then there is the mount which is another very important component of the telescope and it is essentially what uh, allows you to comfortably watch objects so unlike galileo we cannot uh, hold our telescope in our hand and uh, observe 
uh, we often need a stable mount so that we can comfortably sit at one place and observe uh, different astronomical objects for a very long time. Uh, uh, let's quickly see the different telescope types. So the first and the most common telescope type is the refractor, which makes use of lens, uh, a biconvex lens in the front. And then there is a uh, eyepiece uh, at the back. And then the eyepiece may be attached to a focuser, which allows you to sharply focus the image uh, depending upon your eyesight. So this is the most basic design of the telescope. So this is something that uh, Galileo used for, uh, he was one of the first people to observe uh, astronomical objects and study them. And that is what uh, drove the field of astronomy and observational astronomy. And here we are, we are uh, going to see so many more developments in the designs of the telescopes. Later on what came uh, what is known as a Newtonian design. So a Newtonian telescope makes use of a primary mirror, uh, which is a concave mirror. And as we all have learned in schools, the concave mirror converges light. So when a light comes from a very far away source, it enters and hits the primary mirror. And just before it focuses, it is uh, made to fall on a secondary mirror. Now, if you notice the secondary mirror is at an angle of 45 degrees. So we are making all the incident light on this mirror to fall at an angle of 45 degrees. And because the incident angle is 45, the reflection angle will also be 45. And the sum of that will be a right angle, which is, an, which is 90 degrees. And this design makes it even more comfortable for the observer to uh, observe the, uh, you know, the light. Because uh, the light is coming from a faraway source, it is falling on the primary mirror, getting reflected by the secondary mirror. And it is the light is then moving inside the focuser. Now, just uh, above the focuser, there is the eyepiece holder, which has a small lens called eyepiece. And then that eyepiece again diverges or magnifies the image falling on the lens. So this eyepiece decides the magnification value. And the focal length is an important factor for deciding the magnification value of the telescope. So uh, to quickly uh, sum up the terminologies, uh, in the lens system telescope or a refractor telescope, this is known as the objective lens. And the distance between the objective lens and the eyepiece is known as the focal length. Similarly, the overall distance between the primary, secondary, and the eyepiece, the sum of that distance is the effective focal length in case of a reflector telescope. Uh, this is another type of a telescope, which was uh, first designed by Newton, hence we call it a Newtonian telescope. Uh, this, this telescope is often uh, mounted on a Dobsonian mount, so it is popularly known as a Dobsonian or a Newtonian reflector telescope. Uh, there is another type of a telescope, so when you buy telescopes, you will read these names. So uh, it is important that you understand what these designs mean, what, is the, what are the advantages and disadvantages of choosing one telescope over another. So this is called as a Maksuto Cassegrain telescope. So Maksuto is the name of the designer. Cassegrain is the type of the telescope. Uh, what, what is happening here is there is a lens or a corrector plate in the front. Okay. Now the light is entering through the corrector plate. Then uh, the light is falling onto the primary mirror, which is also a concave mirror. And then that light is being uh, reflected onto a secondary mirror, okay, which is a uh, circular flat mirror. And then that light reaches inside uh, this small tube, which contains the eyepiece. So you can see the primary mirror is not a, a whole concave mirror. Uh, it has a hole in the center. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> this focusing knob will push the mirror forward and backward to focus the image and make it sharp. So this design is known as a Max Maksuto Cassegrain. There is another kind of a Cassegrain telescope called a Schmidt Cassegrain, which uses the uh, convex uh, secondary mirror. Okay, so this is the difference in the design. And th there are often uh, advantages and disadvantages in choosing uh, between Schmidt and the Maksuto Cassegrain, which is known as the folding of the focal length. We will not uh, go into those details right now. But this is just to make you aware of what all types of telescopes exist and what all telescopes can you choose. So this is the Smith Cassegrain telescope, which also has a concave mirror, but the secondary mirror uh, is a convex mirror. 
then uh, there is this new type of a telescope uh, called edge hd tel telescope where the uh, light corrections or the chromatic corrections are uh, done uh, at, at the incident source itself so the images that you get from these telescopes are highly circular and the optical quality is also quite corrected so it is quite nice the uh, coma that you get uh, because of the poor uh, spheric, spherical aberration is often uh, completely eliminated with uh, with the hhd telescope design so you will learn about these different types of defects and different types of uh, you know image artifacts when you uh, use the telescope more and more and then there are of course different ways to correct them uh, then this is another type of a telescope which is known as a ro ackerman schmidt astrograph so this astrograph uh, the astrographs uh, cannot be called as telescopes because you cannot really see through them they a camera is attached to these telescopes and then uh, you you can then see or read out the image coming from the camera but you cannot really attach an eyepiece on them so these astrographs are uh, the design of this astrograph is something that most observatories uh, most large observatories use so the ayuka giravali telescope has a kind of a similar design and it allows us to attach an instrument in place of a secondary or uh, it also allows us to uh, let the secondary mirror reflect the light and put the instrument uh, over the back so uh, this is yet another type of a telescope design now uh, we we are going to see about the different types of mounts and different uh, components which are available in the kit and tushar sir will tell us more about that so i i would like to invite tushar sir to please join us and please uh, elaborate more on the different mount types and what all does a telescope making kit really include hello thank you atharva i am audible so basically we are discussing about the mounting and the part so before we start uh, initially i saw i have made my first telescope in 1998 at uh, arvind sir has uh, taught us how to grind a mirror and made my first telescope after that i am uh, teaching and helping the other people for making the telescope so this is the one of the thing so we are discussing about the different type of the mount and the best or the important thing what are the things we required next slide okay so basically uh, if you wanted to grind a mirror well and good the beautiful thing if you don't wish to do the this labor job of grinding a mirror then what is the next thing you can get a ready made mirror and you can do the assembly workshop so these are the small parts is basically you required a primary mirror then the mirror cell mirror cell uh, comes along with a metal and a pvc thing then the focuser spider ipcs viewfinder and the most important thing that you have to require that is uh, you can use a pvc pipe or the else you can do the wooden thing so i will show you the next thing that is basically the video a different type of the kits which are available in a market some are the metal and the some hello so as we are discussing about a telescope making often we talk about a mirror grinding but some of the person don't find it convenient then we can do the telescope making yes of course we can do so we get a different type of the kits which are available in a market some are the metal and the some is with a pvc or the plastic and i can explain you about the different parts which are required in a kit the basic kit required that many parts apart from this what we require we required a pvc pipe which you have to buy from the local market that is the only thing will not come along with the kit but apart from this what we can get in a kit we can get a ready made mirror it's a concave mirror it's a front coated and for the purpose of mirror 
holding inside were required the mirror cell or the mirror holder so the mirror holder it's also come in a different designs and a type okay after the primary mirror what we required the next thing that is the secondary mirror and the secondary mirror holder that is a diagonal or diagonal holder we also often call this particular thing as a spider in this thing it also comes with a metal and the plastic and it is also useful instead of using a pvc pipe if you wish to make it in a wooden box then the specification and the spider will change according to the your tube size apart from this or the spider the next thing what we require for the purpose of focusing thing we require a focuser so these are the focuser that is also often called as a rack and pinion so it will go up and down okay and which will hold your eyepiece the most important the primary will collect the light secondary will reflect the light and our eyepiece that is for use in a focuser that will magnify the image for a different type of the things we also get a different type of the eyepieces with a different sizes so according to your budget you can take this eyepiece there are the cost effective and slightly higher base also eyepiece available and after the eyepiece we required another most important thing that is called the viewfinder or the finder scope that is nothing but a small telescope which which is the refractor telescope okay this is a very small telescope so on a newtonian telescope we are going to fit this gallian telescope that is the viewfinder we can also called as a gun sight or the finder scope and the specification of this particular instrument or the telescope is a 7 by 25 so 7x magnification and 25 mm is the aperture size also you can go a further it is 8 by 50 that is required for the bigger telescope so there are the different type of the viewfinder also but whenever you are collecting a kit that is the basic things we required that mirror cell spider primary mirror secondary mirror focuser eyepiece and viewfinder and after this we required a pvc pipe okay once you procure the kit then the additional thing what we required the pvc pipe for fitting all the things but whenever you are starting the thing before the starting the fitting what we required we also required a drill machine then we required a different type of the tools for the purpose of assembly and the most important thing you have to measure the focal length align everything focuser secondary and everything according to the alignment or the marking what we required we have to drill the holes on the top of this tube and then our assembly will start okay so basically we have started uh, assembly of the tube so before we assemble we have to paint particularly uh, this tube from the inside to avoid internal reflection it is uh, coated with a blackboard paint then we are just fitting the mirror cell inside the tube so according to your focal length you have to drill the holes so 
So now you can see the mirror is fitted inside the tube. Then the next thing is the focuser. So you have to adjust the focuser. on the top of the tube. Then the next thing is a spider. It's uh, holding a secondary mirror that will come exactly below the focuser or we can say the perpendicular to the focuser. The secondary has to come properly. adjust the properly hole and then fit it. Now we have placed the primary and secondary also focuser. So our basic uh, assembly is done. So if you wish to make a telescope or do the assembly, then you have to drill almost uh, 11 holes on the, this particular tube. And you can do this uh, nicely telescope tube. The next part is putting a viewfinder and my tube is ready. So the next part is about a different type of the mount which we require and the along with the mount we also require a different type of the stands. So now we can just go on observing this particular thing. Okay. So after the assembly of the tube, what we required? We required to observe the sky. And for the observation, we required a stand and the mount. So stand is a regular thing, but the mount are the two different types. One is equatorial, one is a ultrasonic. So here you can see this is a homemade thing that is a Dobsonian mount, but Dobsonian mount is also ultrasonic mount. So in this ultrasonic mount, what is we get? We can get the motion of up and down. Okay, that is a one motion, and the second motion is a left and right. So I can rotate anywhere, I can observe any object. So we get vertical and horizontal axis. All right. So that is the Dobsonian telescope or the mount, but that is the ultrasonic thing. But here, our this is we call it as a pyre stand. So you will find this is a very firm and stable mount. And here again we get this up and down motion, same thing, it will also go left and right. So I can easily point any star or the object wherever I wanted to observe the things. Okay, But this is a one type, basic type. But the next type where we can talk about the, the rotation of the earth that is the equatorial mount. So when we are discussing about the equatorial mount, now you can see this mount system is slightly different than our regular ultrasonic. Now you can see the additional thing is there. You can able to see here is the counter weight to counterbalance the tube weight. That is the align with the center of mass. Okay. Now you can see this is a line in a parking position such as now here is the one axis this axis called the right ascension axis 
and with the help of the right assumption what we can get we can get this east and west motion okay and if we can adjust this other motion this is now north and south motion now instead of discussing about the up and downs or the left and right or vertical or horizontal axis now we are discussing about the direction why basically the earth is completely rotating and we are aligning the this axis along with the axis of the earth so you will find here is a, a different latitude circle so we can adjust this particular angle according to the pole star so on the northern side we are aligning with the pole star or if we can visit to the southern sky or the southern side then we will adjust this particular thing according to our latitude on the southern side okay so apart from this what we we can adjust this counterweight and we'll get this motion along with the sky and you can track a particular star or the object for a longer period of the time so that is the beauty of the equatorial mount so these two are the okay okay so now these are the few resources from uh, ayuka's website where you can get uh, information so there is a book written by the pn shankar that is available in a pdf format apart from uh, the material and these things these are the different links uh, where you can search it or the you will get the information about a material what we required so basically if you wish to make a telescope you required a, a simple parts okay if you wanted to grind out the different things then you can just visit to arvin's website where the list of the material is also given uh, about for the purpose of grinding so you will find a different type of the carbo random glass blanks is required for the initial grinding of the mirror and if you don't wish to grind a mirror then the rest of the material is available uh, in a market so you can buy from the any one of the telescope dealer and you can collect those things in the next session we will continue how to align and assemble everything okay so now i i will hand over to atharva yeah so uh, this photo that you see is taken by a satellite called soho and this uh, this is today's sun and you can see that there are quite a few sun spots there is actually a group of sun spots and the numbering is given over here so if you were to go out and observe the sun today of course you have to do that extremely carefully if you if you have a telescope never ever look at the sun directly uh, using a telescope or a binocular Uh, do not try to attempt uh, taking a photograph of the sun even using your simple dslr lens you will no longer be able to use your dslr again and also you will no longer be able to see again because the telescope is going to focus all the sunlight on your eyes so be very very careful when you are observing sun try to use the projection method or try to use the appropriate solar filters uh but yes you can see the features of the sun it's not that you can just use the telescope in the night time you can also use it for daytime astronomy which is observing the sun uh you can observe eclipses you can observe uh, transits of different planets so we can now see the upcoming uh, mercury transit uh which will be happening a couple of years from now and then there are similar activities that you can use the telescopes for so thank you for uh, joining us uh, i would like to hand over to samir sir for uh, for for his ending remarks thanks atharva uh, 
Okay, and, and a lovely uh, presentation put together, uh, just basic, giving the basics of uh, what is involved in uh, actually having your own telescope. So uh, we have some comments as well on, on YouTube coming in and we'll address them. Uh, before that, I'll quickly uh, just tell you that, uh, I mean, some, some comments will get answered by this uh, quick sharing that I will do. So uh, along with the other links that you saw, uh, you also have uh, Ayuka's own uh, telescope making page on our website where you can get access to you know, the excellent book by P.N. Shankar and some other links. And we also have a form where you can register for making a telescope with us in person. So this is about in person. Okay, If you cannot make uh, it in person, but if you wish to join us online here, you're welcome to email us uh, right now at scipop at gmail.com. And just when you're typing the email, add a telescope making this kind of a thing in the subject before you uh, <laughs> write anything else. Okay, so uh, this is uh, a quick remark. And uh, I see that some question, uh, some people are asking us, uh, can we come to Ayuka right now? Can we start making a telescope? Uh, unfortunately, we are still uh, closed for visitors given the restrictions that, uh, that are there in place. And uh, we will, uh, we promise that we will open up as soon as the opportunity comes and it's, it's safe to uh, have you here. Uh, so in case, you know, you foresee yourself coming into zone 22 or so, you can always register with us on the online form. Now, this is for people who are able to come to Pune uh, and, you know, given that if you're making, you know, if you're grinding a six inch mirror or so or five inch mirror, it should take you at least a week. So, um, although we provide the facility here, we are unable to provide uh, you a place to stay, etc. So, if you are able to manage that, uh, then you're welcome to Ayuka and make it here at our telescope making lab. Okay. Uh, and for that, you can register via this website. If you are around Pune or you are able to manage to come to Pune, you're um, always welcome to do this after the restrictions are uh, taken off. So this is how you take an appointment. You can let us know which time you want to come. You can also email us and we'll follow. So we have experts. You've just seen uh, Tushar and Atharva and uh, we'll uh, get back to you on this particular subject. I uh, hope you have taken down this note. If not, just rewind your video and, <laughs> and get it uh, noted. Okay. So now there are some other questions also which are coming up and uh, let, let's let's address uh, some of these. So, uh, uh, and I will also request uh, Arvind to come on board again and, and let's uh, try to solve these uh, queries together. I will, you know, uh, pass on some things. Yes, I know it's, it's a Saturday, we are all <laughs> lounging at home and taking part in this, uh, except us, we are in, in our offices. Uh, in this lovely place here. So uh, we have just shown you some uh, processes uh, which, are, which are part of making the telescope. Uh, one question which is asked by uh, Shreyas is that uh, why do we have to grind a mirror? Right? So that's, that's one question I think uh, we can uh, quickly answer. Uh, because you, know, you have uh, to choose your telescope first. Okay, so it's not compulsory that you start with grinding a mirror. So what we will be doing in this series is that in the next episode, which will come, uh, we are planning that for the 23rd of um, uh, this month. So please join us again. So that is the episode where we will uh, come together and uh, we will help you choose your telescope. So we'll show you options of what are the activities that you can do, what are the possible observations, and maybe even show you some pictures. They don't always show what you will see with your naked eye, but maybe you can get a rough idea of what kind of a scope you need or you uh, wish to have. And from that, then you will choose whether you want to go for a refracting telescope or a reflecting telescope. Okay, and if you are making a reflecting telescope, then the mirror is the part which will, the primary mirror is the part which will collect the light and focus it for you. So now the options are you get a ready-made mirror or you make it yourself. Okay, now the, the, the word grinding in this case means actually uh, cutting the mirror into a particular shape. Mirrors are made out of 
glass and this is floor glass uh, it can be got in uh, your town also i'm sure but the thing is that this is all flat right and you need to get it into a curved shape this is not like butter and you're putting a knife and cutting it out into a shape so what we have is a process in which you use you know very coarse uh, very sorry very hard material uh, like carborundum which basically can scratch glass glass and uh, this scratching has to go on for a while so that you know slowly through the process you get a particular shape all this is of course will be part of a future episodes where we will we will show you and describe this to you and uh, in fact for those who actually join us in actually making these telescopes in the next few months we will do it live with you on zoom so uh, as you slowly register with us after you choose your telescope in the next episode you can register with us and then we will have live zoom episodes where you can join us on on some particular days or evenings and we will have you know uh, these instructions given to you live we can talk with each other so that's the future plan uh, coming back to why do we need to grind the mirror this is uh, it because if you want to make it you want to get it into a shape uh, you will need to grind it it's just the name of a of a process okay <clears throat> there are uh, so there's also a question about where do we get the oda kit we will give you answers to that but not right away because then who will come for the next episode uh, please uh, come back and we will we will address this one by one and uh, you know depending on the kind of choices we make we'll uh, also give you suggestions to where uh, you can procure various parts from and uh, this could be very locally available or maybe some specialist uh, are making them so we'll uh, give you these suggestions in the coming episodes okay there is a question about is there any book to study for telescopes on and making of telescopes uh, we just gave you a link so you can go back and also we'll put the link in the description of this video so there's this excellent book by uh, pn shankar who has given every little detail about making a refracting uh, reflecting telescope in his you know what collection of inst instructions which is now there in the form of a book and a lot of html pages also on the ayuka website so um, there's also i think a, a pdf available which uh, we can later share when the group becomes uh, more active and we are actually uh, actually making telescopes together okay uh, so that brings to a other question which is by pravin shinde and he's asking can we make a group of teachers uh yes we can make a group of teachers and why only teachers we we are here to make telescopes together so as the as the series progresses we will be making uh groups and uh, more interactive things uh where we uh, you know whatsapp or telegram i we prefer telegram uh, groups where we will have more constant interaction rather than just weekly ones so that that plan is there and uh, what we need is your precious participation it cannot just be us <laughs> giving out instructions so your precious participation is needed and uh, we'll uh, keep in touch ne look out for the next episode on 23rd so that is going to be where uh, we will decide on all these things and in fact uh, we may have many more guests joining us and again motivating uh, us all to uh, basically make telescopes by ourselves coming back to our guest uh, <laughs> today specialist uh, arvind paranspe now i want to ask a question uh, myself that uh, you you started this uh, you know uh, lovely uh, set of events of telescope making uh, for, for for four decades you've been uh, enthusiasing people uh, in te making telescopes in 2009 we did so many telescopes across the country refracting ones reflecting ones uh, in the international year of astronomy now over these years uh, how has this uh, telescope making process changed for and, and what do you uh, suggest to the new people the ones who are going to choose to make a telescope now what are your uh, uh, precious suggestions to them uh, um, a bit difficult question to answer but let me try and that is uh, the basic process of making amateur telescope has not changed as you just now said that the grinding process a grinding process is actually when you have uh, two blanks two discs discs of glass blanks which are rubbed over the other with a very hard material called carborundum or silicon carbide 
which is as hard as diamond is so you use that and then you uh, process the grinding i mean you continue with the grinding process in such a way that over a period of time the upper piece of glass becomes concave takes a concave shape and the lower piece become convex shape okay that concave shape is what you are going to use it um, i mean you start uh, grinding it and which you will discuss i'm sure over next uh, in the next uh, uh, or uh, after next episode but that is how it started and it's continues to remain like this across the world it has not changed this particular process has not changed across the world a few things have changed for example uh, once upon a time when i started uh, the polishing material which was uh, cerium oxide was rather expensive to get by and we use what is called the uh, uh, ferric oxide that is uh, uh, rust okay very finely grounded ferric oxide was used for polishing then uh, uh, base for polishing now what we use is a pitch uh, tar which is available on the road you know that people who make the road lay the tar thing so that tar was used along with uh, what is called the rosin and beeswax so we call it as optically suitable uh, pitch uh, that was made and uh, around that time i mean prior to this period people also used to make what is called the pitch tool out of um, uh, paper pulp okay so people have tried various methods but basic method has not changed it has remained the same and here i would like to add two small uh, inputs from my experience and that is that at the time when i started making telescope 6 uh, inch was the ideal size for making a reflecting telescope uh, and and if you want to make a grind a 6 inch mirror it would take something like uh, a 3 to 4 weeks of grinding and polishing and uh, what we call the figuring and eventually make the mirror and then put it in the tube so it would take that much of time then when i was working at ayuka uh, in the same lab there was a student uh, she was a farmer's daughter and uh, she wanted to make a uh, college project and uh, she really said that i do not have sufficient funds so we decided that let us make this telescope as cheap as possible collect material from wherever we can and she at that time she made the telescope for less than 4000 rupees and how did she do that is that she collected material by going to the junk market now uh, tushar to told you tushar showed you how the pipe was made okay the uh, uh, pvc pipe was purchased in the market now if you go to a junk market you might find exactly what kind of thing you need and um, the pvc pipe was purchased from junk market and then she decided to make a 4 inch glass telescope now we thought that 4 inch is we knew of course uh, what the 4 uh, inch is likely to show you but it was uh, also my first telescope and 4 inch uh, class uh, mirror and we found that as a beginner's telescope it was a fantastic instrument why it was fantastic instrument was because 4 inch with a focal length of approximately um, 4 inch means 100 mm diameter so 4 inch with a uh, focal length of about 1 meter will show you rings of saturn moons of jupiter andromeda galaxy shown beautifully and, uh, and therefore when she made this telescope putting on a pipe mount it turned out to be a fantastic instrument and from that point onwards i started advocating people to make a 4 inch telescope or 4 inch mirror because entire telescope can be built in as less time as about 6 uh, uh, to 7 days now tushar would remember that we made uh, we conducted similar exp- uh, uh, workshops at uh, iist at trivandrum that is indian institute of space science and technology so just starting from monday morning till uh, friday morning uh, friday afternoon the telescopes are made and then we also learn the technique or develop the technique of coating the mirror by silver precipitation that is the, that uh, see uh, after the mirror is made out of shiny material okay uh, glass material now the light would completely pass through the glass so you need to make the surface reflecting and that is where you go to the aluminizing chamber and coat with aluminium now why you coat with aluminium because aluminium has a good lot of resistance to atmospheric moisture and atmospheric deterioration whereas if you coat with the silver the silver tarnishes rather fast 
but when you talk about rather fast that rather fast is something like a period of one year or one and a half years or so so uh, we learned this we developed this technique of coating the silver mirror uh, with a uh, precipitating silver on top of it and in both the workshop where something like uh, you know, 15 20 student participated after the, at the end of the workshop same evening they could see through their own telescopes so that is the beauty of uh, making this 4 uh, inch class telescope that you can see you can start using the telescope the day it is ready i mean rather mirror is ready now uh, coming back to another important point when uh, atharva talked about different sizes of telescope see astronomically we know that when you have a clear sky the pocket size air pocket size of the order of 8 to 10 inches in diameter 6 to 10 inches in diameter so if you make a mirror uh, reflecting mirror of diameter of uh, say 6 inches or less then at any given point you are seeing through that particular column so your image quality is much better you make larger diameter mirror because you want to see the fainter object but if you want to see the clarity in planets the 4 inch class 6 inch uh, class mirrors work out absolutely beautifully a um, 4 inch class mirror mirror will show you the uh, as i said moons of jupiter as well as the great red spot the third important thing is that because 4 inch class telescopes are shorter in focal length that means their magnification is less these telescopes are good to see nebulae like orion nebula or um, andromeda nebula because they are much larger in size so when you see uh, if you have, if any when your field of view is large then this object is compact and you can see it better so there are many advantages of using 4 um, uh, inch class 6 inch class 8 inch class but something that lastly i would like to add is uh, and which has been said number of times in the amateur community uh, over last uh, 50 60 years and that is a telescope which you can easily transport from one place to another is most used then telescope a very large telescope which is kept at remote place and you have to go there and observe it so there is a trade um, a trade off that if you have a large observatory or large telescope which you can't carry to your telescope uh, terrace then you will use it less number of times and if you have a telescope of 4 inch class then you will use so these are the various advantages of using the small telescope so people should think about it and when we plan the say at ayuka itself when we plan, when we conducted this telescope making workshop people also talked about whether telescope will fit in uh, fit into my car dicky so uh, there are there are various aspects to design your own telescopes or design as i said in the beginning there's a lot of designing part so we can discuss it over a period of time but it is uh, to answer sameer's question once again that yes technology has not changed very much people have used slightly different material but the process of grinding polishing and figuring the mirror making the surface perfect has remained the same over last so many years and then whether you want to make a telescope and expertise in making telescope or using telescope that is your personal choice and um, putting both together like for myself i would like to make telescope as well as use telescope my 6 inch telescope is still in use i have a 4 inch telescope but my i use my 6 inch telescope so that is your personal choice we can we can talk about this later on at some point i think i should stop here thank you no lovely words and uh, so as you said that it's also the practical practicality of the whole thing which uh, one should consider and then take a decision on uh, what kind of telescope you want to have and make so uh, so for that we will come back we'll get back on 23rd where we'll have a more uh, you know a session more on choosing a telescope you know discussing these practicalities which are of utmost importance you know uh, rather than you know we, we just get a ready made telescope and then we end up not using it or we make a make something which is uh, too big and not uh, you know to our liking or to our uh, purpose suited to our purpose so that's not or able to carry it or able to carry it <laughs> that's right it doesn't serve our purpose because we cannot carry it outside that is yeah like having a elephant in your backyard so uh, so we will discuss all these things in the next episode and uh, if you have any comments as i said uh, you can put it in the chat right now or comment on the video or send it by email to sipop@gmail.com so uh, that's uh, Uh, something you can see on your screen right now 
uh, if if you're if you are too eager, you know, you're really motivated right away to make a telescope with us. Write to us at cyber@gmail.com if you have any specific questions. Write in. But of course, as I said, we want to go together as a group. Uh, these hundred people who have joined us, and I hope you will tell many more people to join us in the next episode, which which they can watch the introductory session now going on right now as a recorded session on our YouTube channel. They can come back and join. Uh, uh, for choosing their own telescope. So that they can aim to do. But if you're really eager, you want to start off right now, please write, uh, write to us at cypop at gmail.com. These are our other, uh, you know, social media, et cetera, channels where you can uh, see more of us. You can get to uh, uh, quickly see what are other, our other programs, uh, which, are, which are many and uh, may be useful to you as well as uh, since you're interested in astronomy, and uh, want to have it as a hobby. So uh, uh, I don't know I, if we spent a lot of good time on this weekend uh, discussing about telescopes. I hope you are excited about that and will continue this journey with us. One of the most important things which uh, was part of one of the slides is that using and uh, you know making and using a telescope is a big joy, but it takes time and perseverance. So let's, <laughs> let's keep that, let's go step by step. And depending on what kind of a user you are, we'll uh, take you through this process. But our we, we still don't want to do uh, at an astronomical time scale. So hopefully in the next two months, we'll be together ready to take on some events, which we will all decide uh, and some observations, et cetera, which we will decide to do in the winter season. So uh, again, uh, let me thank you all for joining us and uh, be spending so much time with us. And we look forward to meeting you again in the <clears throat> next episode uh, on the 23rd. So that's that's our planned uh, uh, date. And I will be doing it at the same time. Uh, please look out for the poster, of course. We are announcing this, but poster will be the final <laughs> announcement where uh, many other details will be given. So uh, with that uh, note, let me thank all the people who are also part of our team and uh, you know helping put, uh, put up this lovely a set of videos and uh, slides and instructions. So uh, thank you all of you and thanks uh, to all the viewers. We hope to see you again in the next episode. So till then, stay safe and be curious about the sky. If you have dark skies, if you have a telescope or binocular, please start looking at the sky uh, on this during this week. See you and uh, we'll, we'll uh, talk more in the next session. Thank you very much.